guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to work on a project where we're going to take my Snapmaker 2.0 and use it as a pen plotter. I already have designed a 3D printed sled that will hold our pen, and we will look at that in just a second. And we'll have two scenarios where we can do one image with just a single color and a single pen, but then we're going to get more advanced and do multi pens and come up with a cool little graphic or like what you might consider like a clip art off the internet. Uh, so let's look at the sled real quick. All right, here's the sled that we have printed. It's made up of mostly 3D printed and a couple of things there you'll see. We've got some uh, slide bearings used on a lot of uh, linear rail type systems for 3D printers. Um, and then we've got one on each side so that it gives good stability. And then we have a magnet used here that you'll see how that's going to be used here in a second. And then we have the second piece which um, connects to the pins so, and the magnet on this side. And what that does is it gives us um, opposing forces, so it makes the sled mostly weightless, including the pin. So if we attach this real quick. So now you see, it's pretty weightless. We don't want a lot of weight on there because we want the pin to last a while, and this will help keep it from getting crushed under its own weight. All right, here we have the Snapmaker Lumen software, which will do very well for a single pin scenario. So I'm going to import uh, a file here that I have already created in DXF, which is just like vector files, but for CNC type world. And so what we have here is um, I, what I plan to draw this on Ultimate Disk. And so this is kind of our, uh, our motto for our Ultimate Group. Um, so we have a graphic up here of a guy jumping to catch a disc, and then we have some text, the disc is worth the risk. So this is going to be really simple. We're just going to draw on the lines. Um, and so what we have laid out here is 0, 0, 0 is right here in the middle. So when we go to set our, our, our printer, we want to find the middle of the disc. And so that's where we'll start. And that way the software will know where to go in relation to that zero position. That's called the work origin. Um, we need to do things a little differently. If there happened to be something right here in the middle, we may want to use an offset. And we'll cover that on the multi-pin because it's probably more practical there. But if we go over here to the right and go down to process, we need to create a toolpath. And the toolpath is the code that tells the printer to say move the object or the pin or the CNC if we were doing this as a CNC operation uh, over in the directions and such. So we're going to create this toolpath and so we can name it whatever we want but we want it to be on the path so it's going to literally drag the pin where those lines are. Um, you can do an outline uh, which if you notice there it carves along the outside of the object so that kind of gives you, I don't know, uh, instead of on the line it's on the uh, outside of the line. And a fill would be it would like fill in all the empty space with um, the pen. We're just going to do um, an on the path for now. And the multi pen will definitely be doing some fills. In this situation, since the pen, you know, it doesn't matter how thick or what it is. So it doesn't matter which one of these you choose. Uh, we're just going to draw on the line. So width of these tools mean nothing. So I'm just going to choose the top one, the V card bit. I'm going to bump up my work to about 1200 millimeter seconds. I don't need to go slow because these this is not a CNC operation. This is pretty fast. Um, I'm only going to go 0 0.5 millimeters deep. So when I set my X, Y, and 0, I want that pen to barely be touching the disc. And then when it starts, it's going to go 0 0.5 millimeters down. And so there should be a little bit of pressure on the pen so the, so the ink flows nicely. The rest of this stuff we don't have to worry about too much. Um, I, like I said, I said work speed at 1200, plunge speed is how fast it goes up and down in the Z axis. I, I think 1000 is a max. So let's save that. And then we'll generate our G code. And then we'll export it. Next, let's look at the PowerShell script that will be running this. All right, let's take it this PowerShell script that I have written. I've called it snapmaker underscore pen dot PS1. Very first line here is that it's expecting a parameter of dash file and then to the CNC file that we will be using. Next couple of lines here is that it will delete any previous monitoring jobs that we have created. And I'll get to those in a second. If there happen to be any lingering, it's just going to clear those out. 
So the first part here is that we're actually going to send a broadcast, uh, kind of a ping over our local subnet and say, hey, all the devices that can respond, let me know who you are. And so as long as it sees one come back and it says server response is SnapMaker, then that's the one we want to talk to. And so now we know the IP address of that system and now we know how to call its API. So we call the API in order to send information to the system. Right here, we're doing a little loop routine and just waiting for you to select yes on the touch screen. Uh, once we move on from there is where we create our monitoring job. This will keep looping every four seconds and send the token that we got back from the initial handshake to the API and say, hey, I still want to talk to you. I still want to talk to you. So as long as that is running, the printer should stay connected. And then we kick off that job and it's sitting in the background. All right. Then we switch over to absolute positioning. And then we tell it to um, go uh, set the origin to zero, zero, zero for the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So when you use the controller on the system, you need to go find your X, Y, and Z. And then once you hit, you know, once you run this file, it's going to establish that as your zero, zero, zero and work from there. And so now we're going to read the, the file. So for every line that is in that file, um, we're going to process it. Now we have a couple conditions here. Uh, if it has this uh, semicolon, it's going to ignore it because in a file that Lumen creates, it, these are just comment sections. And so we don't want to try to send that to the printer. If there's any empty space, we don't want to send that either. If it contains an M3, which is the CNC module to turn on, uh, we want to ignore that because we don't have the CNC uh, module even, even connected. And the M5, we're ignoring that too because that's the stop command. Um, it may not be a big deal, but it may error if we try to send a command and the CNC module is not hooked up, so I'm just ignoring them. So only time it's really going to send anything to the printer is if it's got a G and a code next to it for the G code to work. And so we write the line to the screen so you can see it. And then uh, we process, uh, we create our packet of information that we want to send to the printer. And then we actually send it to the API. So it's going to loop through the, every line until it's done. At the very end, it's going to raise the pin up uh, to 50 millimeters so you can get it out if you need to do a swap. And then it takes us back over to the XY so we can establish the next pin. And that becomes clear in the multi-pin operation. And at the very end, we stop and remove the monitoring job. So let's look at a demo real quick of how we can use this as a single pin. All right, guys, uh, we're back in the Lubin software that comes with the SnapMaker. You can download online. You don't actually have to own a SnapMaker to use it. 
Um, but I want to illustrate here that this is not going to work very well for multi-pen, uh, where we want to do multiple colors and swap pens back and forth. Um, and so let me start just by drawing a circle here, and then another circle on the inside. And just for clarity, let's just you know, make that a little, let's move it. All right, so let's say we want to mill, um, or in our case, draw just this inner circle. Now, I've not been able to figure out how to do that. Um, if I select this one and this one and go to process, create a tool path and say fill, um, and I save it, preview it, um, it wants to mill everything. Um, so I don't know what to do different. I've not been able to see anything to say, hey, I just want to mill the center section. So we're going to switch to a software called VCard Desktop, which I've used for years and is very popular in the CNC world. And let's take a look at that one. All right, here is Vectric. Uh, it's Vectric, Vectric VCarve Desktop. This company's been around a long time in the 3D space. A lot of do-it-yourselfers and hobbyists will use this, but it does have some pro type features. So you might see this in a small machine shop or a woodworking kind of place. But um, we're gonna use it to do this multi-pin scenario. So just like I showed you in that Lubin software, it's difficult to do that particular task. Um, and so I wanna show you how easy it is to do in VCarve. So let's just create a new file. Let's just take the defaults just for this little demonstration. So if I do a circle here, and then I do another circle inside of it, and I just wanna mill this empty space between the two, I just select both, go to my tool pass, and say pocket, calculate, and see, it's gonna just mill between that line and that line, and that's what we want. So let's take an example of something I've been working on for a while to do to demonstrate this multi-pin. We're gonna do a little cartoon character here that you probably all recognize. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's our Taz. All right, so let's look at some of these details here. We have, you know, all these um, lines here. It's a DXF file. And so we're going to go through, I'm not gonna show you all the steps it took to kind of get this done, but you have to go select each of the empty spaces and choose, you know, how you want to mill it. Um, there's two ways to do it. You mill um, the inside, which is called a pocket, which would empty all, all, all this empty space. And then there's the profile, which would just drag the pin on the line. So if you notice, there's actually space here between here and here. So to make sure I get all the black, I do two, um, two tool paths. One is black that will fill in all this empty space and then a profile which will go run the, the pen on the inside and the outside. And that'll give us a nice defined hard line where black should be. So in each one of these, um, I've pocketed out a section and I assigned it a color. So that's the brown. All of these pockets are the brown section. And so once you've defined all of that one color, then you can save it as a file. And I call it, you know, Taz underscore brown dot CNC file. So I know what color I need to use. Um, and then the next section we did for the tan part of his body. And then we went to red, which is like his tongue. And then there is uh, pink, um, which is the inside of his mouth area and then the profile and the pocket of black that gives us all our defined lines. So if we want to see what this would look like before we've even tried it, um, we can do a preview here. Let's reset the preview and let's just preview all the tool paths. And this software lets you pick a color for each one of these tool paths. So that's why we're able to simulate what it actually would look like using a pen plotter, even though this software was not designed for uh, pen plotting. We're just using the CNC functions. All right. Now let's go over layout, because this is going to be the most difficult part to explain here. Um, if you notice, let me change the work origin here. Um, 
So if we set the work origin to dead middle, we have um, a red section right here. So if we did, if we drop the pin down here onto there, zero, 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 we need to make a mark that we can, when we swap the pin, we have somewhere we can realign to. Because no matter how hard you try, if you if you remove that pin and put it in a new one, you're not gonna get the height just right. You're not gonna get the position just right. You want to realign every time you do a pin swap. So if we put it here, right there in the middle, we're in the middle of this red section. So if we put a black dot or a brown dot or anything with that first pin in this section, it's not going, it might show through when we go to do the red, even if you do red last. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an offset. We're gonna tell the, the software here that this over here is my zero, zero, zero. So when you go to set up your machine, I would go find the middle of the disc or the middle of your piece of paper or whatever, and then move it over the size of your workspace. Now I've calculated this box is 180 millimeters by 180 millimeters, and that fits within my disc in drawing. And so I've just said, okay, this is going to be my zero, 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 but I'm gonna use this first. So I'm gonna go in and, and find the center of the disc. I don't need to set the z-axis yet. I just need to do x, y, um, and find the middle. And then on the machine, move to the left 95 millimeters. Once you're there, you can drop the pin to make a mark on it and then lift it back up to the zero position and then run the software. So again, let's go back up here. I set the work or uh, the, the position to the top left, but we're gonna use an offset of 95. So if you look at that now, right here is zero, zero, zero. And so when we set our pin there, the pin should drag over here and start filling in all the colors that we have chosen. And then each time you need to change the pin, you swap it out, run the software again, and realign to that, that position over here, and you should be pretty darn close. My suggestion in this scenario is to do uh, uh, pink first, red, tan, um, brown, and then the solid black lines. Leave black for last, because that will kind of overlap the certain areas that it might be a little tiny bit of white space because your pen's not perfect and may fill it in perfectly. So let's look at a demo of, now, a demo of that now, and then we can call this a project. Here's our final product. That concludes the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. The files um, will be available in GitHub, which will be in the description. And the 3D printed files will be on my Thingiverse. So I'll have that link in there as well. Have a great day, guys. Bye.